hi guys welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video my name is Genevieve and I'm a Nigerian youtuber based in the UK if you're seeing my beautiful face for the very first time welcome to the channel I want you to consider subscribing to my channel on this channel I share my lifestyle and my reality okay my experience on motherhood parenting relocating to the UK you know and all that good stuff so if you are new to my channel thank you for clicking on this video and to my returning subscribers my oldies thank you guys i've not really taken out time to thank my returning subscribers like you guys are amazing how we grew in the past few months i don't take it for granted so guys welcome <laughs> on this video i'm going to be sharing with you the culture shock i had when i got to the uk like some of the things I expected are not the way they seem and some of the things we saw in the movies are not the way they seem, okay? I'm going to share with you the culture shock I got when I arrived to the UK. So if this is something you would love to hear, if this is something you would love to listen to, right? Just watch this video to the very, very, very end. Okay, guys, let's get to it immediately. I've been hearing a lot of stuff about um, the UK and to be honest, I did a lot of research before coming to the UK. So one thing that I observed is that immediately we arrived to the airport, like really we crossed the border, they stamped, welcome to the UK. You are on your own. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to like come out for you. It was shocking to me that in this country, people do not help people in this country. I am not kidding with you. Nobody cares. See, you can be carrying 10 bags like this and people really don't care. You can only find like one out of hundreds of people who might be able to say can i help you do i do i help you carry this do i have you hardly ever find it people don't help as a matter of fact people exchange their time for money people are willing to do anything for you only when you're going to be paying for the services everything is regarded as services anything at all they are regarded as services so the first shock i got is like nobody helps you like <laughs> anybody is a king in the uk nobody helps you to you know do anything the second shocking thing is that they drink tap water here guys like i don't know if it is a shock or if it is a good thing i don't know how to explain it but within the first few days of arriving in the uk uh, i had a hard time you know fitting into the drinking the tap water lifestyle firstly in school you would see the tap running like spring water running there and there is a description bring your own bottle like it's normal to drink water from the tap like you can run the tap in your toilet and drink it and it's fine like the water is that purified the water is premium there are no boreholes here you don't own your own boreholes it's central water for everybody you get so the water is so pure for the first few days in, in the uk it was a bit difficult for me because i could not have money to start buying bottles bottle water to be drinking it was i just started drinking the uh, tap water like that but you know coming from nigeria ha where you come from you dare not drink tap water oh. ha mm. you don't drink it because unless you're even those that have purified their boreholes they still have trust issues with the water coming out from the ground in nigeria <laughs> so that was the second shock i got like guys people drink tap water or you go and you don't fall sick drinking it okay but the tap water is so sweet and it's so so nice the next shock i had is their bad smoking habits like literally everybody in this country smokes okay we arrived at the peak of winter not really at the peak but it was already getting very cold by the time we arrived and everybody was vaping or smoking and it's normal like i remember when my husband <laughs> went to get something from the store and he said he was just staring at like secondary high school kids right smoking and vaping and doing their thing on the road and he was just dazed <laughs> staring at them how they were smoking on the streets and they were like you're right you're, you're right mate you're right mate <laughs> so he's, he was so shocked and they caught him staring at them that way you know that was how shocked he was everybody smoked like it's normal for you to smoke i've also been waiting for a bus at the bus station one day and i saw a man and a woman smoking and their son was there and it's normal it's not you don't have to do it like you could just be at work and you have smoking buddies at, at work and 
where you want to smoke you just go to the area of the part of the building where it's designated for you to smoke and just smoke there and get back to work like it's normal very very normal for you to for you to do that nothing is wrong with it at all so smoking is a thing here and i think it's maybe because of the weather the weather is so cold the weather is so cold and you know it, it just keep doing this to feel warm and before you know it it becomes like a habit that i've seen that some of them cannot some of them are really addicted to smoking like the amount of people that don't smoke in this country might be like me and my husband and maybe a few others <laughs> so guys smoking is a thing here is normal not like nigeria where if you're smoking you're seen as a bad guy or if you're smoking you're seen as a terrible person and trust me that trend is really really contagious like sometimes i don't see the way this will have happened and i'm like I think I should, I think I should test what they are, this thing they are smoking like this. I think I should test it. It's very, very contagious. So it takes you to, you know, hold on to your values, you know, and also how much you value your health for you not to take um, smoke, for you not to smoke, you know, you know what I'm saying. So I also noticed that after um, every bus ride, as you're getting down from the bus, they say thank you to the drivers. I don't know why. But there is this thank you culture they say to um, drivers they say to um, public providers even when you're paying for the service you say thank you so i joined the chorus as you're leaving the bus you say thank you even though there are some times when i might not remember to say thank you because i'm still like getting to understand i think there's a culture here still on their buses their bus system is so so reliable i'm like how were they able to plan and structure the country like this that the buses are so reliable there is always a bus stop close to you okay sometimes you have to walk for longer um, minutes to get to a bus stop but the buses are so so reliable you can't miss road even if you miss your bus stop the next stop you're able to find your way and continue with your trip that's how reliable their bus system is like how did these people plan themselves like this i just wonder how it's so 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 reliable still on their transportation and the roads guys you hardly hear car honk you know boop, boop, beep, boop, beep. you hardly hear it in the uk no you you hardly hear car honk anyway the first uh, neighborhood where i was living was asian neighborhood and they don't have european people there so i had a lot of car horns around there but now if you just come to city center where um it's like a leveler or a leveled environment where there are uh, british people core british people and other people Ha, ah, you can hardly hear car horn. So everybody's so patient, everybody's so relaxed when driving. People like and you can hardly see people fly across a uh, traffic lights when it's yellow. When it's yellow, they send you to wait. You fly across, you know, you receive a letter in your house. So the system is so so smooth. The map here is very, very, very reliable. Like before you go out of your house in the morning, you can plan your trip. You know how the weather is going to be and all. But as you're relying on the Google map and the, uh, for your trip, I don't always rely on the weather forecast because it can tell you that it's a sunny day. And before you know it, it just change it for you. So guys, as we as it's winter, I'm always in my jacket. So even when they say it's a sunny day and you can see that it's sunny in the morning, can just take after an hour or two and the weather will just change it for you and it will start freezing 99 so the google map is accurate but you see the weather mm -mm, is not i cannot trust the weather in this country at all at all at all the houses are so small what we used to do living room in nigeria can be the whole house for a family in this uk i don't know why they are so when i say minimalistic or they are so conservative with space like the houses are so so small when i started viewing houses when we wanted to rent houses the very first house i viewed if you see the third room that is a three three bedroom house if you see the third room guys the third room can only take a tiny crib and i'm like is this a third room they said yeah, it's a three bedroom house and the guy was like oh, it's a three bedroom and all oh, this house is so small how will i enter how will i pass i'm coming from nigeria where we're used to space like the living room is so big and the rooms are so big you just be wondering how are you going to fit in how are you going to fit in and i see is their lifestyle okay they are so they're so minimal i think it's a way for the system to place everybody i mean in the same i don't know how to explain it but somehow their lifestyle is so minimal so conservative so small 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 smallish do you understand okay you see the pots here the people the pots the cream pots here you find 
a normal British shop. Small, 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 small pots. If you don't want the big, big pots, you can go to Asian stores, you can go to packing stores, and all those stores. That's where you will find like big pots. So these people are so minimal and everything. They are eating, cooking, housing. Everything is just so small, 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 small. And you know now Nigeria. That's not how it is. Like if you want to cook like this, you have to bring like meat that has sweet and occupy space. But their meat, you go to their stores. Small, small, small. I think it's the culture here. So still on their houses, I noticed that as small as their houses, and I'm talking about the house, the ones that are houses. So there's flats, there's machinery, and there's houses. So the houses might be so tiny, it might be a terrace, so tiny, small. Then they will have big gardens. I don't know what they do with their gardens. And for me, I'm not really ready to start maintaining gardens and all right now. So the gardens are a thing for them. They are excited about it. I think in summer, summer when it's summer, that's when it's appreciated the most. You can go out, stay out in the garden and you know, do all that good stuff in the garden. So I think that is actually the um, hype behind the garden. So the next thing I found shocking about the houses in the UK is that do you know that you can see a house looking so whack outside like the house is looking terrible outside but when you get into the house it's clean and neat like how does it happen most times you will see the pictures of these houses and you know the garden is not looking nice also the house is really old they are old houses but inside the house is nice is comfortable is conducive for you so that shows how much they really um maintain their houses and stuff here yeah, they have a very high maintenance culture in this uk another very shocking thing that shocked me more was that the very first day i got to the uk guys i missed road entered the wrong buses i was trying to get my brp i was trying to do a lot of stuff as someone that just got into the country right so i missed boss eh? i waka trek 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 i came back i was really really tired but i took off my shoes and not even a single dirt on my shoe like these guys are so clean like that not even a single dirt on my shoe like <laughs> niger where i was coming from you trek you lose mud and all the stuff that will happen waka on my waka that day guys there was no mud at all like I was so 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 happy like ah niger my country niger will make you think that life is difficult life is not that difficult so the system and the arrangement of the system in this country is so so sleek imagine that for me to do my registration and my enrollment into school it happened within one hour at a, it took like split seconds you see my, my id card was given to me within seconds you just sit down capture and is given to you immediately, activated immediately. The system is made for you to just know that life is easy. Coming from where we are coming from, I know you get matric number in Absu. Ha! Oh my God, you will suffer. They call it an Absu stress. Why? Life is not meant to be stressful like that. So these guys actually do not stress you with you know all those nonsense they just have a way of making life easy registration was very easy going to school is even easy you know another very good thing about their culture is the fact that you see this uncle auntie brother you know they don't do that they call people by their names this one is something that i've always appreciated about life okay they call people by their names it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you respect the person or you don't respect the person. All my lecturers by their name, like it's the Halis or whatever that is the name of your lecturer. And it's cool. You call the, the people, just the, call people by their first names. That is, it is so cool in this country. You know where I'm coming from, there is so much emphasis on they, they, brother, you know, all those things. And it doesn't even go to any issue. Do you understand? It doesn't mean you respect the person. I find it stressful. Okay, if I'm calling you auntie or uncle, it's not supposed to be as a matter of compulsion. Okay, well, uncle is is there. What I mean is all those auntie, they, they brother. If you if, if you get what I'm I'm talking about, yeah, although it's an African culture, it's an African culture, it's an African mentality. But I love the fact that my kids are not going to be subjected to that. Okay, it's your choice to call people what you want to call them, but what i will emphasize is respect 
you respect people no matter what you call them. It's not when somebody will be calling you auntie and the person will be eyeing you. Auntie Susu Sheba Apo. You can understand what I mean if you're using auntie. And the person is telling you auntie Sheba Apo. Like the person is calling you auntie but is insulting you and rubbishing you. Would you rather prefer that? So I, I, I really love that aspect of their culture so, so much. So another very shocking thing about the UK is that if you're going shopping, you have to bring your own bags. They pay for bags, like nylon bags, when you go to shop from shopping malls. They pay for nylon bags. So it's, it's um, a way for them to recycle plastic bags, right? But then it shocked me. Like I know from where I'm coming from, ah, uh, they give you bags. You even ask them to double it. You even ask them to triple it for you. Like it's like I bought something for me. You cannot put bag in it. You didn't bring your own bag. Either you pay to get a bag, or you carry your things on your hand and be going. So if you don't want to bring bag, or you forgot to bring bag, you have a choice. You either pack your things and go, or you you pay for bag. On shopping, do you know that? Uh, you can shop from two stores at the same time but carry the things you bought from one store and enter the next store. So that shows that the camera system is working so, so well. The camera system is working so, so well. So that's why nobody's going to set your bag or tell you to keep the things you brought from another store in a locker room for you to, for them to, uh, for you to not enter the store. Nobody has time for all those things. So the security system is top notch that the camera works. So if the camera should capture your face stealing, best believe that if they run checks on you, they might be able to catch you. So I think that's the idea behind it. So even if you do shoplifting, it's easy for them to catch you because cameras are everywhere. The interesting thing I found shocking chat about the UK is that they love pets so much. They love their dogs and cats so much. Like when we were living before, ha, our neighbor had a dog, a cat. And if you see this cat, you see the cat is a spoiled cat, so fat, so fat. If you see the poop of the cat, usually very big. So what cat? These people value pets. If you go to their malls in their stores, you will see section for pets, like pet, pet, pet stuff. That's what they, they sell there. Different pet stuff, like to make pets comfortable. So that's how much they value pets. I even learned that some people don't even have kids and they decide to maybe have a pet a dog or a cat or whatever it is people are going as far as having snakes as pets these days so they love their pets a whole lot like if a member of their family you cannot understand how i'm living in a two-bedroom flat and i have a dog or a cat in this. i can't i can't relate maybe when i stay here for some time some more i will relate but if i have a very big house where the pet can stay the security dog can stay somewhere do you understand hey you can stay there but i don't know how to share my space with animals really i don't understand it. i am too shocked about it like the cat has his own bed the, the dog has his own <sighs> okay guys that is it for them so another thing is that contactless payment is a thing here like you have your card right you have your contactless card, your card, your ATM card, and you can just finish buying and you just tap on it and money gone. So it's a thing here. I don't, I, I find it unsafe, but it's kind of safe because there's a limit to someone can, what someone can take from your account. It's just like me, when my card was stolen from me. Okay, I left a video on how I was robbed and my card was stolen from me and the person swiped my card within 10, 10 minutes. It happened so fast. The person swiped my card immediately shut up and I blocked the 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 card. Okay. So the person swiped my card and took some money. And just to watch the full video, I'll leave the link here in the description box for you to watch the full video. So guys, um contactless payment is a thing here. You have to really be security conscious, okay? Very, very conscious of security when it comes to that card. What I do not understand is who takes liabilities for the money that leaves your account if your account is stolen, if your card is stolen. Do you understand? Who takes responsibility for it? Because as much as it's your responsibility to keep um, your card safe, you can't really control uh, what happens when your, your card enters into the hands of maybe a thief or something. So who takes responsibility for all that? That's actually the part where I don't get on with that contactless um, idea. Another thing, I noticed about this country is that there is this culture of self-service okay nobody is your maid nobody is your house girl 
Some restaurants, after eating the restaurants, you clean, you clean the table and clean up the table after you. Okay, like in school now, in my school, after eating, you leave the table how you met it. There is this self-service culture. So if you, you can't bring your odogu or your whatever bad character into this place, there is this culture of self-service. People self them, serve themselves. You can even go to a mall, finish shopping. What else you can be able to do that? And, and pay, check your things out and pay and go. Nobody, nobody helps you. You can do that. There is also other cashiers in the mall that can help. But there's just a culture of self-service. If you want to serve yourself, you can do that. Still in the culture of self-service, right? Because of how organized the system is, you can do a lot of things from the comfort of your home. Open an account. Uh, guys, when I say you can do a lot of things from the comfort of your home, you can do a lot of things like open your account, get your NIN, do this, do that. A lot of things can happen from the comfort of your home. You don't, they don't even need to see you personally. Just get given the details they require and you're good to go. And again, trekking is a thing in this country. Like people trek a whole lot in the UK and in the form of exercise and then I enjoy that part of the UK. People trek, like people can trek for Africa in the UK. So it's a thing here, it's a thing here, they trek a lot and it's also a form of talking to me when my lecturer mentioned that the real british people who learnt english by socializing do not know how to speak good english and they also do not know how to write good english in fact it's the british people that are supposed to be writing ielts i'm telling you the truth because they learnt english language by socializing it's not like they learnt english language the way we learnt it you learnt syllables you learnt pronouns verbs and you understand how to navigate around these words and all the real British people, they do not know how to write English. They do not even know how to speak good English. Trust me, they don't. And you know the word, in it, in it, this thing that will form in Nigeria, in it, uh, in it, they see it as Raz. It's Raz in the UK. <laughs> Whatever you're saying, in it. I say in my country, they use it to form, I just got back. So the guy told me, it was all actually told me that. He said, no, that they see it as Raz in the UK. If you're saying in it, they're going to be like, look at you like, ah, where is this one coming from? <laughs> in it what? <laughs> oh God, I only thought this video was going to be very short. What I found most shocking about the UK is that I was thinking I was going to be seeing a lot of white British people everywhere. But welcome to the UK, Asians everywhere you turn. I'm like, ah, uh ah, -uh, uh -uh. Asians everywhere, Pakistans, uh, Bangladesh, Indians, like they are everywhere in the UK. So, for everyone Nigeria that you see in the UK, there is at least 20 to 30 Asians. So, I'm not going to over exaggerate, but trust me. Asians are plenty here. I don't know how much Africans are here, but trust me, Asians are plenty in the UK. So guys, I've come to the end of this video. This video is very, very long. I just pray I'm able to edit it and cut off a lot of things so it should be short. But these are the things that shocked me like <laughs> when I got to the UK. Did they shock you too? And if you have other things that shocked you that I didn't mention in this video, please leave it in the comment section. And if you've watched this video to this point without subscribing to my channel, guys, subscribe to my channel. If you've watched this point, your family. Thank you, thank you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!